Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to sample some of the Arteza fabric paints that, that I was sent by Arteza. So I've had these for quite a while and I wanted to try and get these videos out quickly before Christmas because I had them in Papa and I opened them and then life kind of got in the way. And um, so I'm back to show these because I think that these, if you're looking to send someone or you're looking to ask for um, some type of art products for Christmas, um, I think that these would be a very nice choice. So the Arteza colors are, to me, they are very reasonably priced for what you receive, and yet they are a very nice paint. They're not like a craft, what I would consider what I would buy as a craft paint, like at Walmart. These are nice paints. I really do like them. And so we are going to today play with the fabric paint. So we're just going to, they come very nicely packaged. I will tell you, Papa, every time I get them out, Papa's like, I can't believe, you know, how nicely those are packaged. I really like the way that those packaging is a big deal to him. <laughs> so, and they are, they are packaged really nicely. They come in some really wonderful colors. And, um, you know, they have this nice little holder to keep them in. And I thought that today we would make some fabric ribbon and then maybe um, make something with that fabric ribbon. So I just have here, this is just a white bed sheet that I bought at a secondhand store and washed it up. And now I can use it for whatever I want. You know, I mean, as far as white fabric goes, it was a very reasonable way to purchase some fabric. Now what I like to do, I'm just gonna do just just going to do a little piece here. Um, what I like to do when I'm using fabric paint is I like to just, I have a bowl of water here, and I'm just going to get it wet. Uh-oh, I have lotion on my hands. Hopefully that doesn't make a difference. We'll find out because I've used it before. So, so it's nice and wet. And um, then I just choose the colors that I want to use. To me, wet fabric grabs fabric paint better. Now, if you are trying to paint a picture, um then you would not want your fabric to be wet because the water would, would wick it out a little bit. But um, I'm going to shake this up first. But to, to do something where you are trying to cover a larger piece, wetting the fabric first, it does, it does lighten your color a bit. Um, but to me, um, I like the effect. I think it really blends it in very nicely and allows it to spread easy. So I'm just going to do it like that. I'm going to wet my brush also. And then I'll start with the lightest color. And the colors are very vibrant. So even with this fabric being wet, you get a really nice color. So we'll come down here and do this one. And I really do like the um, the softness of it after you have painted. A lot of paint gets very, um, if you use like a craft paint or something, and even some fabric paints that I have used, they get, um, the fabric gets very stiff after you paint with it. And so this paint really, um, I have not noticed that it has made my, fabric stiff at all. So we're just going to paint this on here. And I do have some that are already dry because you do need to set them aside and let them dry. And you can keep them in a smaller area for your paint to keep it darker or you can spread it out a long ways. The more you spread it, the lighter it will get, so you can kind of get an ombre effect as you go. But there is what that looks like, and I think that looks really nice. I, You know, so many fabric paints, when you use them, are so light. And I'm going to just set this aside. Here I have a piece of parchment paper. I'm going to set that one aside on a piece of parchment to dry, and then... What I'm going to do really quickly, because those are nice, bright, would make really nice like for bohemian tassels and that type of thing. But if you don't really care for those colors, what I do after I do that 
is take a piece of, again, wet fabric and it twofold. I'm going to kind of clean up my parchment here a little bit and I'm going to get a lighter color from just the little bit that we had that, that I brushed off the edges of the fabric. And so now look at that beautiful. I don't know if you can see the color in there or not. Let me put it next to a piece of white. Maybe that will help. Because it's a beautiful light pinkish, pur pinkish purple. Isn't that gorgeous? So you don't have to have the bright, bright colors. And you don't necessarily have to mix them down with white to get your nice pastels. So you can go ahead and you can make different color strips with just the one set of paint you know you paint this first come in with another wet one and so you can do bohemian and then you can do some beautiful um shabby chic so i think that that is a really nice way to make sure that you don't waste any paint on your paper so and then once they dry um they really are soft and i'm going to show you let me put this in my paint water I'm going to take this away and I'm going to quick bring up some that I already have dried and I'll be right back. Okay, I am back and I dried these off because the ones that I had already made, I've either used them or um, I have them all finished for samples. So I had to dry these off. I thought I had some other ones, but anyways, so here they are. They are, they are very nice and soft and, um, I really do like that. So, but the things that you can do with them then, with your with your fabric paints also, is you can use them to stencil with, and I really like to stencil on fabric that I'm going to um, use as beads or even as tucks, um, because then when you roll your bead, you get that extra bit of color. And so I'm just going to show you how well it works to stencil. The black is a nice, um, is a nice covering black. So some blacks, when you use them to stencil with, um, they don't cover very well. And I'm going to just do this little bit right here and show you how well this covers. Now, if you want it to be lighter, you can... I'll do it right on this end here. The more you use your sponge without refilling the black, the lighter you can get it. So we'll kind of do this bottom side down here with just very little bit of black. So you can just kind of have a little bit lighter. You have really, really black here, and then you have some lighter black in here. But even at that, I used one dip of that sponge. It did all of this stenciling and with a very nice cover, even as it lightened up a little bit, like over here on this corner, it still gave me a really good cover. So, and you know, very opaque, which is really nice um, when you're wanting to do something like stenciling. You can use it like any of your regular paints that you're going to with the different things that you do with any of your regular paints you can use all of your mixed media tools that you use when you do your mixed media and it looks really nice and it covers very nice So um, it just, it works like any of your regular mixed media paints, but it works well on fabric without making it stiff. When you use acrylic paints on fabric, they always get stiff. And so, you know, when you're working with fabric and you want to paint it yourself, um, it's really nice to be able to have something that you can put on your fabric and 
once it dries, you're not going to have this really stiff clump that maybe if you want to wrap it around something, it doesn't work very well. Now, this is just a spool, and it doesn't work real well unless you have something soft behind it. But there we go. So you can use stenciling. You can paint with it, um, you know, just with a regular paintbrush. I don't do that real often. Um, I don't know why. I just prefer mixed media and so I don't really paint a picture but if you wanted to just paint something in let's just take a couple of these colors and we'll just put a little bit of paint on this and the thing is is you don't need a lot that is really the big big thing Just a drip of each one is going to be way more than I need. Let me see. I've got another brush here that will probably work a little faster. Oh, this is not the best brush. Okay, I'm switching back. That brush is terrible. And this one will take a while, but we'll just do a couple of these little spots so that you can see what it looks like and see how it works. And if you do your swatches first, you'll know which of your colors are darker than others, which are more opaque, which are more translucent, which opaque is just more solid, translucent is just more see-through. I'll just put that one on there and you don't want your brush to be super wet if you're trying to just paint because if you get your brush really wet when you're just trying to paint what's going to happen is you're going to water that paint down which these paints do work very well watered down they a lot of paints when you water them down they lose a lot of their color And these ones did not do not seem to do that. They they keep their color fairly well. They lighten some, but you still have that pigment in there to see the color. So there we go. You can see how that covers. It covers nicely. I mean, we covered over purple and we covered over pink. We covered over pink with yellow and purple with red, and that covered up very nicely. So they paint all on their own. They paint really nicely. And if you have, if you have a nice um, pointy, ooh, <laughs> if you have a pointy brush, um. And I really probably should get some more black. I don't know if I have enough here. But they do outline. I have one here that I started outlining. If you have a good brush, they outline very well. So, um, you know, some of them, some paints that you will use, and even some fabric paints I've used, where I have tried to outline or write on a piece of fabric, what happens is as I put it on there, sometimes it bleeds. And so, well, I'm gonna just show you because I've already got half of it done. But see, this is what I did here. It does not bleed at all. It does give you a nice thin line with the right brush, but still, even some with the right brush, the line does not stay like that. It bleeds out, it spreads out, and you can really get a nice line with that. So, so it's great for outlining. It really does work very well. And then what can you do with some of these things? Well, for me with fabric, I like to make fabric beads. See, now I'll soak this up with something. I'll use that when I'm done here because I don't want to waste it, but it, it goes very far. It does really well. So we can make some little fabric beads with our, with our fabric strips. 
and you know to do that you just take a bead roller if you don't have a bead roller you can just um <laughs> trying to get this in here and trying to think at the same time if you don't have a bead roller you can um just wrap it around a toothpick or a skewer but i just cut a piece of fabric or a piece of paper because i don't want to waste all of my fabric so what i've done is the first thing that i do is I just take a piece of paper and roll it up to make the bead. I tip my glue upside down while we're doing this. So that you have a nice sturdy bead, a nice fat bead without wasting all of your beautiful fabric. So I cut a piece of paper that was just about a quarter of an inch, maybe even an eighth of an inch smaller than my fabric because I don't want my paper to quite go out to the end when I roll my fabric. So we're just going to roll that around there, put a little glue on it. And then put a little bit more glue on the bead and start with your fabric. And I just put a little bit, nice and thin, because you don't want it to come through your fabric, but you're gonna cover over a couple of times with the fabric, so you don't have to worry about it too much. If you put it on there and all of a sudden the glue comes through and you're like, oh no, you haven't ruined it because you're gonna keep rolling. But this is just a small piece, about four inches of my fabric that I have dyed. I stenciled on it with white and then and then you don't have to if you think well I'm not going to paint around that with a thin brush you can also um, write on top of it with a sharpie this is just a black thin sharpie um, that went around the stencil and that works really well too the sharpie writes on the paint very well and so then you're just going to take your fabric and wrap it around your bead And when you get to the end, put just a little bit. Now here's where you do want to make it thin. And there we go. Now you have a fabric bead. And I really like the way that that looks. And this, this one here, these colors I watered down a lot because I wanted really light colors for a project that I was going to work on, which I've, that one's been done and gone by now, but this is, this is what I have left. But I think that that looks really nice. I love the way that that works. And like I said, you can use marker on the paint also once it dries. So you can make beads with them. You can use them to make belly bands for your journals. And I have this one here that I was doing some samples on. And I thought that would make a really pretty belly band. So all I did was cut a piece of cardstock just a little bit thinner than my fabric. Again, because I want the fabric to be my focal point. I don't want any paper sticking out. And I want to just very thinly put some glue on here. Now this is with any fabric. You're going to want something sturdy behind it if you're going to have a belly band. Because you want it to be you want to tuck in behind it. And then you just pick the part that you want as your belly band. Turn it over to see if I'm pretty centered. Just center that on there. And then you can either fold it over the top if you'd like or just cut it off. some scissors here so you can do anything that you can do with fabric but I a lot of times I'm gonna cut this a little bit longer because I might want to fold it over the page that I put it on when I put it in a journal I don't have a piece of paper here I thought I did um, but there you go. There's a nice belly band that you can put in your journal and tuck things underneath. So a lot of times I go to make a project and I think I don't have the right color material. Or 
um, I want to do something like Bohemian, and I'm looking, and I can't find anything that really works. You know, the colors just aren't quite right. And so the nice thing about having your own fabric paint is you can make your fabric any color that you want it to be, to use it for anything that you want to use it for. I was actually watching Sonia make, um, like she did a bird, and then she made a, it was a puffy, and the bird was really cool. I went and looked through all my fabrics and I don't have anything that has kind of like a picture on it. So I just right now, as I'm thinking, I'm thinking I have a bird stencil. I'm going to stencil a bird on a piece of, um, I'm going to make some pretty color background and I'm going to stencil a bird on there and I'm going to use it to make a puffy because that way I have fabric with a bird on it. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really nice to have fabric paint to, to use when you need it. And there's so many things you can do with your beautifully colored fabrics. So I like the way that this works. I would recommend it. And, um, as a matter of fact, they do also have some paint pens, um, that are, that are fabric paint pens. And... I might even think about trying those. They also have some brush paint pens too. So I really do like these paints. And if you would like to get some, hopefully there will be a coupon in the drop down below. I don't know if we're too late for that or not. So, um, but in a link to Arteza where you can go look at all of the different types of things that they have because they have all sorts of paints and paint pens and gel pens. They have all sorts of things. Um, so go and give them a look if you're looking for something for Christmas. I would recommend these. I really do like them, and I will definitely be using these for some projects that I have coming up. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.